Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So on this tutorial, we are going to walk through how to update and secure your Linux Mint install. This is not critically, critically important on a virtual box, but it is something that you will want to get into the habit of doing. So I'm going to start my virtual machine here. And then what we're going to do is push it into full screen mode and then I will cut out the video until this, the uh, box is loaded. Okay, so our machine is now loaded and the first thing you'll see when you first load up your, your box is you will see you have the uh, start screen or the welcome screen here and this will enable you to see various features, documentation, apps, etc. Um, I don't uh, necessarily need to see this so I'm just going to hit the box there. If you're new to Linux or Linux Mint you might want to read through the documentation maybe have it pop up a little bit on the screen before you uh, completely dismiss it. Now the first thing we're going to look at is down here in the right corner on the, uh, the task uh, tr system tray there, whatever, you'll see this uh, shield here. And uh, this guy here is your update manager. So it wants us to start by picking an update policy. Now you can turn off updates altogether by disabling this program from running at startup. And then the system will only check for updates when you manually start it. But as far as the manually starting, it wants to default to this optimized stability and security. And this is recommended for most users. It's going to update the security settings on the system, a few items on the operating system, but not much more than that. There is the don't break my computer setting for the computer novice. This is so that your computer doesn't spontaneously break one day by accident because an update went rogue. Uh, we're starting to see that kind of stuff on Windows 10 happen because they don't have quality control anymore. They push out an update and they find out it's a problem after it breaks a lot of people's computers. So uh, there is a setting if you do still want the security updates but you don't want to worry about anything else, you can turn on that setting. And there's the always update everything option for the experienced users. And this is going to give people the option to just absolutely download everything and then we'll sort out the mess a little bit later. So I'm going to keep this right on that middle option to optimize the stability and the security. I'm going to hit OK and then this is going to want to first update the uh, update manager. So the first thing it's going to want to do is uh, update this so then after that it will check for the rest of the updates and the upgrades for the system and it's going to take about uh, 30 minutes or so for the updates and upgrades to process but for here we're going to wait for this guy to load up and then it's actually going to give us a big blue box up there that's asking us where we would like to download our repositories for so the repositories are the places where the code is stored and obtained. So I can come over here, it says, do you wanna to switch to a local mirror? We'll hit okay. This is gonna give us another box after a login screen. And then this is going to let us determine where we are downloading our Linux Mint packages from. So click on the location. It's actually going to pin several different locations and then you can select the one with the highest speed. So in this case here it looks like the advanced hosters actually gives us the best speed. So I'm going to take that as my option, hit apply. And then there is a base, which is the Ubuntu base. This one's actually in United Kingdom, so I think I definitely want to get something closer. So there's a school in Philadelphia giving me almost a megabyte. Okay, there's uh, uh, USF giving me about a megabyte a second. Let's see if anything faster shows up here. Sometimes there is one a little quicker. Ooh, there's a couple, there's a 1.9 at Virginia Tech. So we'll take that one actually. I'm gonna select the Virginia Tech uh, mirror there because it's about two megabytes. 
that's going to give us uh, a little bit faster downloading speed when we have to download, which this is probably going to be about four to 500 megabytes. So here it's uh, checking out the information and it's giving us a download rate. Now this is not actually downloading the packages. This is actually downloading the package lists. Okay. So it's done downloading uh, all the repositories there, or the, the lists of the repositories. So I'm going to close this box here. And then what we're going to see after I get that box closed The only update we can do right now is to update this update manager. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So it's going to give us a summary of what we're about to do. And then once we do that, then it's going to give us a uh, password prompt. <laughs> Windows computer just decided to go crazy. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hit the OK. Hit Authenticate, and then this is going to actually download our package. While that's doing that, I'm going to see what Windows is doing in the background. Oh, for the love, Microsoft. No kidding. No, don't close the program. I need that. For the love, Microsoft. Why don't you turn off all your crap that's taking up just as much data as Windows desktop? Okay, so we're done downloading the uh, that. I had to go and check on my Windows system. My Windows system's like, you're running low in memory. We're going to pop all over the place. You should download this program. Stop this program. It happens to be my screen recorder. I suggested to Windows instead, why doesn't it shut down its multimedia boatload of bloatware crap that's actually taking up more memory than my screen recorder is? And then my system might actually be working stably. Oh, Windows, this is why I'm switching to Linux. So here we can see all of these packages are, are ready for updates. Um, the numbers will list the level of priority. Number one being these are little software updates, not super important. The higher the number, the more, more important, but it may not be totally important to update. So this guy here with the exclamation mark is a security update. So we probably want to do that one. You'll see that the only ones that are not selected by default are these Linux kernel updates. We only want to do those if uh, we're finding some, some problems with our system. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the install updates here. And then once again, this is going to give us the prompt to ask us about uh, ask us about um, uh, what just confirming what we're going to download and, and install and then it wants a password again and then it's going to take about 30 minutes to update so I'm going to uh, stop the video and I will turn it right back on as soon as we're done okay so we have finished updating it did take right about 30 minutes despite having to fight with windows i actually uh in the middle of my break i turned off the super fetch in the services.msc windows program um so apparently super fetch is what is supposed to make a windows system run awesomely fast and in full reality it slows the thing down like a turtle so I shut that down. Chances are it's probably uh, not going to solve the problem because now ever since I did that, the Windows Desktop Manager is taking up so much memory, I'm 
sure that that's going to crash before I end the video. So uh, we have finished updating everything. You can see all that is left is the two Linux items that we did not install. And now if you check your little update shield in the lower corner by your clock, uh, you will see that uh, it is a uh, check mark there indicating that the system is up to date. The only other thing I want to look at on this uh, part of the video, which is just about setting up the initial install, is I want to have a look at the firewall that is built in. Um, we're not going to do too much with it. I just want to bring your attention to it. It is also in the settings, but if you type fire there, you'll get the firewall shows up in your list. We are dealing with a service here that we want to authenticate. So we want to go ahead and do that. And then we will get our firewall screen pop up here in just a moment. So firewalls are a little controversial if, uh, you know, the, they're always good to run in the, in the instance that uh, the firewall is really there to prevent things from accessing your computer uh, that, that should not be. Um, there are times you want to turn off firewalls and there are certainly times when you would like to configure your firewall. Uh, so, for example, by turning this on, it's going to deny any incoming traffic and allow any outgoing traffic, which is just fine because, you know, if there's a hacker, he's probably outside the system. Now, if I were a more advanced user, I'd go into the rules and I'd set up rules to allow each of my computers, either by their IP address on my network or by their MAC address, I could allow those to access the computer but nothing else, which is, you know, a good thing to do. The big problem with firewalls is sometimes uh, sometimes a firewall could literally be set to even hit outgoing to deny and then I can't get to the internet. And a huge problem in a lot of uh, online programs that you download, even including programs like Java or Flash on a Windows platform, um, they will come pre-packaged with like you know, McAfee's Security Essentials, which turns on a firewall, which blocks your internet. <laughs> You get a lot of calls if you uh, do a lot of work in computers like I do for people like, I can't get on the internet. It's like, okay, uninstall McAfee. Oh, does it work? Yep. That's the problem. The These internet suite programs can frequently turn on firewalls to the internet and, uh, and it r really uh, causes problems with people. I'll go ahead and turn this on. It's just allowing anything to go out of the computer. It's denying anything from coming into the computer. If you do turn on your firewall and you notice that something doesn't seem to be working right, the first thing you should always try is go into the firewall settings and turn that off. So this has been a uh, very exciting episode. Uh, I think I'm going to leave some of my Windows stuff in there at the end at the final edit here. Um, uh, oh, oh, Windows 10. It's, it's just the peak of irony I'm doing sessions on Windows 10 to teach you how to explore operating systems outside of Windows 10 and Windows 10 is causing so many problems. Oh Lord, in their defense this computer is crap, but uh, to the contrary, even my really good operating system here running, uh, running my production version of Mint did the same stuff when I first brought it home and it was running Windows 10. So. Oh, switch to Linux, people. Switch to Linux, unless there is an absolute reason you got to stay on Windows. So this has been Tom. Oh, switch to Linux.